Government Plaza today as the city clerk's office scanned and then counted the absentee ballots. Fox 10 News reporter Andrew Perez is live at Government Plaza tonight. Andrew, the vote totals from those ballots were really, really close. Yeah, and I think that caught a lot of people off guard. A lot of people were very surprised. I'm inside the auditorium right now here at Government Plaza where the official results are still coming in. They're being shown on this big screen behind me. I'm joined live right now by city clerk Lisa Lambert, who, of course, has been working tirelessly for quite some time to get this election off the ground. First things first, um, what is it that happens now? I know you still have to wait here till all the numbers come in. Right, um, we're waiting on one more cartridge, and once that's done, then we'll shut down until um, next week when the Board of Registrars has their results, and uh, we'll do provisionals. If there are any provisionals out there, we'll tabulate those, and then we'll canvass the votes at the City Council meeting. Absolutely. Now, one of the biggest issues that we've been hearing a lot, especially toward the end of this election, is uh, possible voter fraud. I know we've been having some issues with, with voters coming out today. They come out and they say that they had already voted when they didn't. What, what is it that you've been hearing through some of the polls today? I, I really haven't uh, talked to any of the inspectors because I've been down here with the cartridges. So um, I don't know anything about, you know, complaints about fraud from anybody. Well, uh, what about some of the issues that we had at some of the polls? I know for in one instance there was a, a father and son that had similar names. Yes, we had a, um, a father son with the same name and we had a mother daughter with the same name and um, they were coded um, opposite where the son should have been coded and the father was coded and the mother was coded and the daughter should have been coded. So. So, you, so you didn't see anything too major though? No, I didn't see anything major. And my last thing of course because we've of course been keeping a close eye on this absentee ballot after the postal inspectors confirmed that they were investigating possible fraud. It's a pretty strict process you guys have in there. It's not like anybody can just go in there and start counting these absentee ballots. Kind of talk just really briefly what it is that you guys had to do uh, for those absentee ballots to count them. Well, um, this was a different process for us because we used a different machine. We used a uh, high-speed scanner. And so you're opening um, numerous ballots at one time to um, place inside of a scanner and let it scan and, and, and start tabulating. But um, we didn't do the actual tabulations until the end, which is 7 o'clock, but we didn't finish until about 5 minutes to 7, so it was pretty much right on time. Were, were you shocked that the uh, numbers were so close? I was. I was. I was really surprised. But, um, you know, all of the numbers, you know, based on the numbers that we got in and um, the numbers of ballots that ended up not being counted because they were spoiled. They didn't have signatures on the back of them. They did not have witness signatures. Um, so, you know, it, it threw the count off a lot, I'm sure. Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm sure you need to get some rest after all this kind of day. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there you have it. They still got a lot of work ahead of them. There's still a lot more that goes on behind the scenes here, but of course, we're going to continue to follow that for you. As for the actual investigation into uh, possible voter fraud involving absentee ballots, that's still technically going on. We're trying to get more information for you from the postal inspectors about that and also the district attorney's office. For now, reporting live in Government Plaza, I'm Andrew Perez. Back to you. And obviously there was a lot of attention on the race for mayor, but three Mobile City seats were also up for grabs today. We want to take a look at some of those numbers, starting with the district.